Good morning and welcome on this first Sunday after the Epiphany, the Sunday that we call the Baptism of our Lord. Our opening hymn is on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. I invite those of us here to meditate on those words and those at home to sing out. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us now listen to God's word for this day. first reading is from the book of Genesis, the first chapter. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Here ends the reading. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. 
In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. First, I want to say that this morning, the paper ran an op-ed that was submitted by a group of clergy with a list of signatories. We learned that the paper's rule, however, is that an op-ed can only have a byline of three names, and mine was one of them. While I didn't pen the statement and would have written some of it a little differently, I agree with the fundamental concerns and think that this is a discussion we need to have. There is a history of racism in this country that still plagues us and must be addressed. That history contributed to that which happened this week. We are in the season of light, the season of epiphany. This morning, we heard the very beginning words of the Bible, the story of God's creative work. With a sweeping wind over that which was a formless dark void, God spoke, let there be light, and there was light, and it was good. In our gospel reading, we have jumped from the baby Jesus of last Sunday to the adult Jesus of this Sunday. The baby Jesus who was born into danger and survived a massacre aimed at getting rid of him because King Herod feared an infant as a threat to his power. And this adult Jesus, upon whom God spoke as he came up from the water of the River Jordan, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased, and who was then thrust into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Jesus' experience on this earth was a pathway through resistance, danger, and efforts to snuff out this light which God placed on this earth. John's Gospel begins with the affirmation of Jesus as the light of God. The Gospel declares the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And it makes this affirmation which carries us through Jesus' death and resurrection. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. We are living in an unprecedented time of darkness in this country. With the backdrop of a pandemic that is raging with numbers that barely make sense to us, 4,000 COVID deaths per day, with a total of over 360,000 dead in this country and rising, even as vaccination efforts have begun. With that backdrop, a fracturing of our body politic became cataclysmic on Wednesday. This fracturing has been building for a long time. Some of us would say it was there from the beginning of our nation's history. But now we've reached a point of reckoning from which we either descend into the abyss or we come to a shared understanding of who we are and what it means to be citizens of the United States of America. As citizens, we have relied upon a constitution, a process set forth for representation and debate, and a system of checks and balances through a three-branch system of government. Through the centuries and as the world has changed, That constitution and that process have challenged and assisted this country in growing more fully into its ideals. As Christians, our loyalty above any nation is to follow the way of Jesus. As a result, the church has always stood as a voice of critique in this world, 
calling all nations to strive to more fully reflect the ways of Jesus and to care for the well-being of all people and all of God's creation. We, like Jesus, receive the Holy Spirit in our baptisms. In our baptismal covenant, five promises are made. And if we were baptized as infants or children and our parents made those promises on our behalf, we affirmed them at our confirmation. They are to continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers, as we are doing now. To persevere in resisting evil, and whenever we fall into sin, to repent and return to the Lord. To proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. To seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves to strive for justice and peace among all people, and to respect the dignity of every human being. We make those promises saying, I will with God's help, because we know that we will stumble. We know there will be times when we will be blind, or we will have less courage than the situation demands. We know we will make mistakes, sometimes unknowingly, and sometimes willfully, and will need repentance and God's forgiveness. We know all of that, but we keep trying because we've made those promises as followers of Jesus. I am so deeply troubled by the degree to which Donald Trump, the President of the United States, his enablers in Congress, and sympathetic media sources have perpetuated falsehoods in an effort to stoke the fury and fear of his supporters. It worked. And then the president sent them to the Capitol. Today, Ashley Babbitt, her name needs to be said. A woman who served honorably in the U.S. Air Force is dead because she fell victim to those lies. And Brian Sicknick, his name needs to be said. A Capitol Police officer, also a veteran, is dead because he was doing his job in defending the nation's capital, the congressional representatives elected by we the people, and the constitutional process that was taking place. Because we are so divided, I know there are those who will disagree with me or will think I shouldn't be talking about this. But we can't not talk about this. The well-being of our nation depends upon it, but more importantly, our Christian faith won't let us be silent. If you read the posts leading up to Wednesday, and if you listen to people since Wednesday, there is so much hate, such vile language being spit at people, even death threats, and still so much readiness to perpetuate lies. Why? We have to get underneath the hate, the anger, the lies, to truthfully say what's really at the core of our disagreements regarding what it means to be citizens of this country. For four years, we've had a president who, quite apart from policy issues, has stoked the flames of hatred, mockery, and cruelty indiscriminately. It has emboldened those who have racist agendas. We know A segment of those who participated on Wednesday were associated with organizations who harbor those beliefs. Why do we allow a president to stoke that kind of division? Why? When we as a nation have had such a tortured past with native genocide, slavery, the Chinese Exclusion Act, the Japanese American internment, and yet this nation has continued to work towards its ideals and has continued to inspire generations of immigrants with those ideals. Those ideals are not just American. They are Christian. They are a recognition that we are all children of God and that there is no place for hate. It was Jesus who said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus and the prophets before him called for us to care for the poor and oppressed, the hungry and imprisoned, the widow and the orphaned, in this country and anywhere where people are suffering. That's our Christian calling, our Christian duty. How we make sense of the dissonance 
that arises in living in this world with that calling is part of our Christian journey and growth. But we can't deny that calling nor ignore it. This has been a week of roiling forces within our society. On the same day that some in our nation were raging against a constitutional process that was removing their choice for president, Georgia, a state in the Deep South, elected its first black senator and its first Jewish senator. Yesterday, Pope Francis, in commenting upon the attack at the nation's capital, said, thank God this exploded so it can be seen, so it can be remedied. Maybe, but five people are dead. However, this pope, who knows something about societal violence, added, violence is always like this, but we must understand well so as not to repeat it, learn from history, learn that groups that are not well integrated into society sooner or later will have these eruptions of violence. That's the work we need to support our government in doing listening and integrating those who feel marginalized and unheard. And it begins with truth-telling. And we must turn away from those who continue to spew hate and lies. We must pray for peace, for safety, for truth-telling and honest discussion. We must ask, who are we as Americans? And who are we as Christians? In facing the challenges ahead, I encourage all of us to reflect upon the baptismal promises of our faith, meditating on what they mean in our lives. You'll find them on page 3 or 4 of the Book of Common Prayer or in the Facebook post online. I encourage you to listen to the messages of presiding Bishop Curry, Bishop Bob, and others that I sent out by email on Friday and the letter from Bishop Bob that is in today's bulletin. And I encourage you to read the Gospels, the stories of this Jesus, upon whom God spoke those words, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And to remember that Jesus is the true light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Amen.
I invite you to stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed printed in your bulletins on page two. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers this morning are from the Book of Common Prayer, Form 2. During the silence after each bidding, you are invited to offer your own silent prayers. Let us pray. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia. And in the Dawson cycle of prayer, we pray for the Right Reverend Robert L. Fitzpatrick and Spouse B. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by the one who is the source of our being. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died and all who are grieving. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And at our bishop's request, two additional prayers from the Book of Common Prayer. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of the United States, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
O oh God, you've bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me in the confession of sin. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I invite you to be seated for announcements and birthdays. Uh, note the January newsletter that I mentioned last week was available online. There are some hard copies here. Those of you that are in the sanctuary, if you want to take one or more to give to others, please help yourselves. Also, just a note, the Altar Guild would be very appreciative if there are some folks that have, you know, regular size washer, washing machines that could launder some uh, acolyte robes. Um, just let the church office know. We'll put a few together, and you can just pick them up, minimal contact, and then just return them when you are able. Uh, giving envelopes for 2021. Some of you have had giving envelopes. If um, Because we have a new bookkeeper, he's not sure who all that is or who would like a set. So if you would like a packet of giving envelopes for 2021, please let Susan know in the church office, and she and Bill will be sure to get you one. Um, the, uh, the vestry has begun its budget work. Pledges are still... Um, uh, certainly accepted for 2021. If you not, if you need a pledge card, contact the church office. Annual meeting, please note, is January 31st. It'll be by Zoom this year. So we are going to do a test run the week before, January 24th at 9, and uh, then the meeting will be the following week at 8:45. Those of you that want to be here in this space, we will accommodate that. So. Um, more on that as we get closer to that time. We do need a slate for diocesan convention to represent St. Peter's. We need 10 according to our bylaws. So if you would be willing to run as a delegate, it's one Saturday, the end of October, um, please let me know because uh, as I said, we do need 10 people. It's a good way to get to know more about the work of the church at the diocesan and larger level. And then also, uh, if you're interested in vestry, let me know as well, because that is also something that we vote on at the annual meeting. Zoom Bible study is Wednesday at 10. Please also note in the letter that is in your bulletins, the bishop has asked for all of us to join in a collective time of silent prayer at noon on Wednesdays, for the next couple of Wednesdays, for the United States, for Hawaii, and for all those in civil authority. Um, Jazz Vespers always is published on Thursday, put onto uh, Facebook and on the website by 6 p.m. If you are interested in Tai Chi or Taekwondo, there's an announcement in the bulletin. Ken In is teaching that, but ignore the email address. That's an old email address. It's no longer functioning. So he said to go to aarp.org slash Oahu. Uh, and if you have any questions about that, you can ask me. We do have a number of birthdays this week. Today, it's Kristen, we have three birthdays today. Kristen Connors, Lois Gray, and Paul Ewan. So, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Kristen, Lois, and Paul. Happy birthday to you. Um, we also have Susan Dang's birthday on Monday. 
And with Susan is Linda Hino's niece, Trisha Griffiths. And Tuesday is Alana Young's birthday. Thursday is Bill McKinney's birthday. And Saturday is Sophie Choi and Derek Ho's birthday. So lots of birthdays. Um, Kristen, Lois, Paul, Susan, Trisha, Alana, Bill, Sophie, and Derek. So let us pray. O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants. Kristen, Lois, Paul, Susan, Trisha, Alana, Bill, Sophie, and Derek, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to listen to a musical interlude by Dr. Epping while I go and wash my hands in preparation for Holy Communion. I invite you to stand. Let us lift our hearts to the Lord and give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you've delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection we await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, 
that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to be seated. I will come to you. I will just hold your palm out. I will drop the wafer into your palm. Hold on to the wafer, and when I return, we will all slip the wafer uh, under our masks. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of Christ and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ, our Savior, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.